Hello aspiring developers. I trust you are doing well. I'm Kalutu, a software engineer at Janja Programmers. You can find me on, on all socials as Kalutu Daniel, but currently I'm very active on Twitter. I am thrilled to join you today as we embark on an exciting journey into the world of web development. In the upcoming weeks, we'll delve into fundamentals of development, including HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Before we get into the details, let me tell you more about some of the concepts in this course. First, let us talk, let us talk about HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML serves as the skeleton of our web page. It structures content by defining headings, paragraphs, lists, and more. HTML is the foundational language for everything we encounter on the web. CSS functions as the stylist. It enhances the visual appeal of a website by adding colors, fonts, and spacing. CSS transforms a plain HTML document into a beautiful styled web page. JavaScript, on the other hand, adds functionalities and introduces inter interactivity and dynamic behavior, breathing lives into our web pages. To simplify, HTML is the structure, CSS is the style, and JavaScript is the functionality. You can view the HTML of any website by going to the desired website, like for me, I'll go to our website, Ginger Programmers. Then I'll click on that link to open it. Once you're on the website, select any element, right click on it, then select the inspect option. You'll see a tab that will have the HTML of that web page. Also, you can click F12 on your keyboard to come to this page. Now, let us clarify the difference between front end and back end development. The front end, also known as the client side, is what the users see and interact with on their device. While the back end, also known as the server side, is the part of the website that runs on the server and powers the front end. The back end includes databases, application logic, and APIs. Some static websites only require a front end, but if a website interacts with a database, a back end server is needed for processing before sending the data back to the user. Full stack development combines both front end and back end. Throughout this course, our focus will be on front end development. We will not only learn the syntax and the structure of these languages, but also understand how they collaborate to craft seamless and interactive web experiences. Web development is a dynamic field, and by the end of the course, you'll have the foundational skills to create your own websites. Without further ado, let's dive in. Before we start learning, let's first get the resources we need for this course. Just go to your, your favorite browser, mine is Chrome, and log in into your GitHub account. Once you are logged in, search for Janja Programmers. I'll put the link in, your, in the video description. Once you are in Jaja Programmers, go to Repositories and get this repository. These repositories contain the resources you need for this course. We will fork this repository because you want a copy of this repository in our own account. And also, we want to be informed if there are changes in the, in the main account. So I'll click on fork. Then in the repository name, you'll write your desired name. I'll just leave it like that. Then click on create fork. I hope that you are taught about forking, so I'm, I'm not teaching you about forking today. When you fork the repository, you'll have your own repository with the desired name in your GitHub account. And also when there are changes, changes in the main branch, you'll be notified here. Like now you can see that this branch is up to date. If there are changes in the main branch, I'll be told that I'm behind. So now, let us also clone this repository in our local machines so that we can make changes locally using VS Code. So to clone, you click on code and copy this link. Then you head to your desired location and open a folder there. Then open git bash in that folder. If you can remember, to clone a repository, we use the git clone command. So just go to your desired location, 
or a folder which you have created right click in that location that you are in then select open git bash here then the git bash terminal will open when the terminal is open you can use the git clone command then paste the url you just copied then hit on enter then it will start cloning the repository you copied to confirm whether your repo has cloned you can just type ls to check the folders in that location so you can see mine is here it cloned this one i can confirm by checking the name so i can just change directory to the newly created folder then open visual studio code open this folder in visual studio code using the code dot command once you open your visual studio code you'll have a screen like this on the left you'll see our two files that were contained in our repository one of the files is, is a readme file that describes everything about this repository the other file is a html folder when you open the html folder you'll see two more folders that is intro and images this 01 intro is the content that we'll be learning on day one 02 will be the for day two it will go that way till the last day so in the intro folder there's a readme file this is our area of interest because it contains the notes that we'll use in this because you can collapse this side do you see it in big screen so these are the notes we'll use in this because this is a markdown file and this is markdown code you can also see i have a an icon here in my top right when i click on it you see that the same notes are visible here but in a more beautiful way than it was before this is called the markdown previewer it is an extension that i have in my visual studio code and if you didn't see the icon or you don't have the, the extension you can come here to extensions and search for markdown you'll see a lot of extensions here that convert our markdown code to to be more beautiful but you can but i'm using this one for format you can just use anyone you like i'm currently using this one for format if you install it mine is already installed if you install it you'll have the icon that i was showing you before and when you click on that icon the markdown will be transformed to a beautiful manner so now let us dive into learning html i'll be using these notes for my reference so html or in full hypertext markup language is a markup language that defines the structure of a web page and its content as we have discussed earlier that html is used for defining the structure of the web page html describes the structure by enclosing different parts of the content like content like images or text within elements that have opening and closing tags now let us go to our editor and create an html file so that you can see how the how the elements look like with the opening and closing tags an html file has a .html extension so we'll create a file with the .html extension to indicate that it is an html file to create a file click on the explorer icon then right click in the intro then select new folder let us call our folder index.html then hit on enter to create the folder once the folder is created we'll create we'll write our first html code by creating a h1 header so as you have said earlier to create an element you have to write an opening and a closing tag so an opening tag is written with angle bracket then name of the tag then a closing angle bracket you can see that mine automatically autofills automatically but if that is not the case at your place you can just type the closing tag by yourself by writing a second angle bracket forward slash then name of the element that is h1 you can notice that the opening tag and the closing tag are similar except that the closing tag has a forward slash before the name of the element and that is what differentiates an opening tag from a closing tag then inside the element inside the tags we can write uh, our text i'll write this is my main header 
because as we learned earlier that headings have different levels there's h1 i'm going so we we'll learn about the other headings as as we go on yes. once we have written our header you can view it in the browser but before you view it in the browser and to give you a little thing that you can add to make your life easier you can see that my my vs code on my bottom right i have this go live button here but if you don't have it this comes because i have an extension called live server live server enables us to refresh the browser every time we change our code in the visual studio code so to get the extension you can come to extensions and search for live server you can install there are many live servers but i'm using this one by retweak just click on it and install it once the live server is installed you'll see this go live button here on your on your visual studio code once you have the extension installed you can click on the go live button to run your code when you click the go live button it will open a browser you can see now it's setting starting then it will tell you that the the browser has opened on port on port 5500 so you can it will open automatically your browser or if it does not open you can just visit this port to run your code see here is our code this is the main heading in the browser so we wrote the code in visual studio code and we are viewing it in the browser you can see this is port 5500 so if your us didn't open automatically in the browser you can just visit 127.0.0.1 then full colon 55000 it will automatically open this this code you are running yeah when you right click and inspect you can see the same code we had written there is the one that is visible here in the in the inspect and that is how we write and run our html code the h1 through h6 heading elements are used to signify the importance of the content below them the lower the number they have the importance so h2 elements have less importance than h1 elements it's a good practice to use to use h1 for the main heading of your page and then use h2 h3 and the rest of the headings for subsections also you should only have one h1 heading per page now let us create the h1 to h6 headings and view them in the browser so that you can see the difference so h1 is the first heading then you have a h2 you can write here second heading and h3 like that until h h2 h3 h4 h5 h6 until h6 h3 h4 five h6 then you can change the the text inside this is the third heading this is the fourth one this is the fifth and this is the sixth heading Let us save it and let us go to our browser and check the, the headings. When you go to the browser, you will see that our main heading is still there and there are other headings that have been added. So this is the H1, H2, H3 up to H, H6. You can notice that the H1 is bolder and has huge fonts compared to the rest of the, of the heading. Now that's where we say that H1 is more important compared to the rest of the headings now let us go and learn about paragraphs to indicate a paragraph in html we use the p p tag so just like the other elements p tag has an opening and a closing tag so you write a opening p tag and a closing p tag then you put some text in between i write this as a paragraph 
then that is how we create a paragraph an opening tag a closing tag p tag opening p tag closing then in between write our text now this is a paragraph let us save it and view it in our browser and see how the paragraph differs from the headings when you open your browser you can see that our paragraph was added below the h6 element so you can notice that our paragraph the font weight of our paragraph is a, a little bit lighter compared to the headings I, I think you can tell the difference between this paragraph and the rest of the headings and that is how our paragraph differentiate itself from the headings the next concept we learn in this class is comments comments in html are used to add notes or annotations within within the html code comments are not displayed in the browser when the page is rendered making them useful for adding explanations reminders or notes to yourself or other developers while working on code in short comments are used to document your code a comment in HTML start with this one and ends with that. You can see that the comment is greened automatically. So anything right inside here will not be displayed in the browser. As you have said that comments are mostly used to document your code. Or if you want parts of a code to not, be, to not be visible in the browser, we can also comment that code. For example, if you don't want our sixth header, if you want our sixth header not to be visible in the browser, you can just comment it. If you comment this sixth header, it will not be visible in the in the browser. If we save and go to the browser, we will not see this line of code, and we will also not see this sixth heading. So let us head to the browser and confirm that. As you can see that the sixth header is now gone because we commented that code that was displaying the sixth header. Also, the code that we added saying that this is a comment is also not visible. The code was below the paragraph. So below the paragraph, there is nothing. That means that when a code is commented, it is not visible in the browser. The next topic that we will learn today is attributes. Attributes in HTML provide an additional information about HTML elements and they are added to the opening tag of the element. They are always included in the opening tag and consist of a name and value separated by an equal sign. There are many attributes and all the elements in HTML can have attributes. But in today's lesson, we'll focus on the style attribute. Style attribute in HTML is used to apply inline styles to a specific HTML element. Inline styles are CSS rules that are directly applied to a single element, affecting its appearance. The style attributes allows you to define CSS properties and values for an individual and individual element in HTML. Let us now look at the code, coding part and you see how the style attribute is applied in our HTML elements. In our code, we can add the style attribute in the paragraph tag. As we have learned earlier that a style attribute or any attribute is added in the opening tag of an element. So you can see that I added the style attribute in the opening tag of the paragraph element. Then we can add CSS property like color. We learn more about CSS in the upcoming lessons for example i say color blue so when i save and i go to the browser we will see that the paragraph has a blue color let us now go to the browser and see it in effect when you go to the browser you can see that your paragraph is in blue the color of the paragraph changed from black to blue and the change was due to the color property which was applied using the style attribute so we have seen how style attribute works and how attributes in general are added to elements now let us recap what we have learned today today we learned about html and we saw that html is a markup language that describes the structure of a web page we also learned about elements 
we saw the opening tag and the closing tag and we saw the difference between opening and closing tag we also learned about the, the structure of the of the elements the syntax of the elements we also learned about headings we also learned that headings start from h1 through h6 and the lower the number the higher the importance we also learned a little bit about paragraphs and comments we saw how comments are important and also we learn about importance of documenting your code using comments in later classes the final thing that we learned today was attributes and we saw that all elements can have attributes all HTML elements can have attributes and also attributes provide additional information about the, the elements and the attributes are usually specified in the starting tag of the element and they have like name and value pairs and some attributes we'll look at them later they have no value just the attribute name alone we also dived into the style apt attribute in detail we saw how the style attribute is used and we saw it in action by applying the color property to the paragraph of our code that we had written so that was what was planned to be taught today have a nice day see you in the next video where we'll learn about nesting images and other tags that we'll learn tomorrow so see you there peace out